In this training, we will explain how to start a threat model by adding components to the trust zones in our diagram. When it is our job to make security decisions about our applications, Erius Risk can help us achieve that. We will do this by feeding the relevant information about our project or product into the diagramming view of Erius Risk. This view allows us to draw a data flow diagram, also abbreviated as DFD, that creates a threat model. Adding components to the diagram imports the necessary libraries, the associated threats, etc., into our threat model. These are instantiated once the Update Threat Model button is clicked. Becoming aware of these threats then helps us make more informed security design decisions during product development. More importantly, Arius Risk helps us make these decisions well before the threats can materialize and pose a cyber risk to our organization. In Arius Risk, components serve as one of the primary building blocks for constructing a threat model, together with trust zones and data flows. We include these components into our diagram to depict our product and to provide a visual representation of its functionality or architecture. Components can represent a wide range of elements within the diagram, such as services or data stores. Components are typically associated with risk patterns, which entail specific threats, weaknesses and countermeasures for the use cases involved. Another important aspect of components is that they must be placed inside of a trust zone. This allows Arius Risk to contextualize the risk patterns. Let's go into Arius Risk to add components to the hotel booking application. When looking at the threats view before any components are added to a diagram, we will see that no threats are present yet. This makes sense because we haven't yet added any components to our diagram. The diagram view, where we selected the trust zones from in a previous training, also houses all available components. The search functionality will help us to quickly find what we need if we're unsure exactly which category holds the component we're looking for. Even though all software runs on underlying infrastructure, we will not add any infrastructure-related information to our diagram yet. Future trainings will focus on how to take that aspect into account, but for now we'll only add the logical components that make up our application. As previously mentioned, there are two ways of finding components. Firstly, we'll take a look at the client side of our hotel booking application. Arius Risk has a client side category which we can expand to see all available client side components. Hovering over components shows us the related risk patterns. When dragging this component in, observe the highlight around the trust zone. This tells us that the trust zone is ready to receive that component if we release the mouse button. As is the case with everything in IT, we must ensure that a meaningful name is given to this component. Renaming a component is done by simply double-clicking it and starting to type. We'll call this one Hotel Booking Customer. Next, we'll look at the server side of things to illustrate the second way to find components. The search box can be used to find the RESTful web service component by typing the word REST and pressing enter on the keyboard. Hovering over it points out the related risk patterns. As we can see, there are many more and also different risk patterns associated with this component than with the web client. We drag the RESTful web service component into the public cloud trust zone. Let's call this component Hotel Booking Web Service by double-clicking it and typing that name. Similarly, search for database. We'll use the other SQL database component. Again, we'll give this new component a meaningful name like Hotel Booking Database. When we take a closer look at the upper right-hand corner of the user interface, we see a button labeled Update Threat Model. When clicking this button, a threat model update is issued, starting with a series of sanity checks on our diagram. To illustrate this, we'll drag another instance of the other SQL database to the canvas, but place it outside of any trust zone. We'll click the Update Threat Model button, triggering an error message telling us what's wrong. After deleting this component again, we can click the button again to rerun all the checks. Before we do, notice that the components are displayed in grayscale, indicating that their risk patterns were not included in the threat model yet. If all these checks pass successfully, the threat model will be updated. This update imports the necessary risk patterns and countermeasures that are associated with the newly added components into our threat model. 
any changes to existing components or data flows will also be taken into account. Also notice that after clicking the Update Track Model button, the component icons are colorized again. The color of components gives us a visual cue of whether or not a component's current state is reflected in the underlying thread model. When we switch back to the threads view, we can see that our components are now listed and the number of threads have already been generated, even though we haven't connected the components yet. In the next trainings, we will complete this thread model by adding data assets and filling component questionnaires. In this training, we learned that completing a data flow diagram generates the underlying thread model. We saw that components are linked to risk patterns. And finally, we learned how to add components to a diagram.